Question number three, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister and asks, does he stand by his statement that, quote, we recognise ISIL is not a short-term threat and there is a lot of work to be done in the long term, end quote. If so, does he accept this means New Zealand's deployment may last longer than two years and involve more than training? Mr Speaker. Right honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes and no. no. Supplementary. No. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Is sending 16 trainers and support troops for a maximum of two years the absolute limit of New Zealand's involvement in Iraq, even if ISIL is undefeated? Or does he agree with Jerry Brownlee that mission creep is like a force of nature that cannot ever be ruled out in UK Foreign Secretary Hammond, who says this is a generational war? Speaker, Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, yesterday the government laid out clearly its uh, contribution and the military capability uh, in Iraq. Uh, that is the extent of what I see us doing, and it's a shame that the opposition didn't have the courage to support it. Oh, order. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Order. Point of order, well, Andrew Little. Mr Speaker, order. the Prime Minister, in the heat of his uh, presentation yesterday, got away with Order. alleging or implying that members of the opposition didn't have guts or didn't have courage. But to say it explicitly exactly is against standing orders and I invite the Mr Speaker to call them to account. Order. 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 The comments made yesterday were certainly robust. I don't think they were out of order. I don't think on this occasion the answer is out of order, but I don't actually think it's addressed the question that the member asked. So I'm going to ask Andrew Little to order. It is not helpful when I'm on my feet for a whip to continue to interject. I'm order. I'm going to ask Andrew Little to re-ask that question. Order. Well, no, I've ruled. Well, I've, uh, I'm asking Andrew Little to well, ask that okay. question again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> is sending 16 trainers and support troops for a maximum of two years the absolute limit of New Zealand's involvement in Iraq, even if ISIL is undefeated? Or does he agree with Jerry Brownlee that mission creep is like a force of nature that cannot ever be ruled out? And UK Foreign Secretary Hammond, who says this is a generational rule. Right honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, uh, that's the expectations of our military contribution. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Now that US and Canadian troops have already moved from training operations to combat operations, will he give New Zealanders a 100% cast iron guarantee that the same won't happen with our troops. Mr. Speaker, right, honourable uh, Prime Minister. I think the member's incorrect. In fact, actually, the uh, Canadians and I think the Australians uh, started with a premise that they would be there for an advise, assist and accompany. Uh, the New Zealand government's made it quite clear we won't be sending people in combat troops, unlike Labor. They sent the SAS on combat troops to Afghanistan. Oh. Oh. Su order. Supplement no. order. Order. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Prime Minister. If the Prime Minister feels so strongly about, quote, showing some guts and, quote, not standing by whilst atrocities are committed, why didn't he just deploy the SAS in a combat role to help take out high-value ISIL targets without having to expose our infantry trainers to the unnecessary and inherent risks that lie in training Iraqi soldiers. Right Honourable Speaker. Prime Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, I think it's quite interesting because I think um, Mr Mark, uh, the member, as a former military man, is actually showing that he disagrees with his leader in the position that he took yesterday, Mr Speaker. Order. I have a point of order. Yes, Mr. Speaker, from the right answer should be to the point and address the question that was asked. The Prime Minister is beginning with a very contentious statement, demonstrably false as everybody knows. And you should stop him. Order. 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 The trouble with the question is it wasn't a clear, concise question. It was a very... Order. It was an elaborate question which gives the ability for the Prime Minister to respond that way. If the member had simply asked why didn't the government decide to send SAS troops in combat, that would have been a clear, clear question. I could have got an answer. But when members embellish the question like that, they give the answer and op the answerer the opportunity to give an answer that addresses the question. Not to the member's satisfaction, but if they could only learn to ask concise supplementary questions, they'd get a better answer. Point of order, Supple Mr Speaker. Point of order. Point of order, Ron Mark. 
Mr Speaker, might I ask you in, in later times to read my Hensard and reconsider the consequences of that decision that you've Order. just given? Order. I can assure the member that I will reread the Hansard, as I assure the House I do after every question time. Supplementary question? Supplementary question. Point of order. Can I just clarify, is this a fresh point yes, of order? Yes, most certainly, Mr Speaker. Fresh point of order. One mark. Uh, Mr Speaker, could I ask you to allow the Prime Minister to finish his answer, because he was only part way through when he was cut short. Order. If the Prime Minister... If the Prime Minister wishes to continue his answer, he's welcome to do so. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. And Mr Speaker, can the Prime Minister give New Zealanders a 100 per cent... Point of order. 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 I will hear the point of yes. order, but it is getting to the ridiculous stage when we're getting points of order now that are leading to disorder. Mr Speaker, sense. my colleague asked a question. Uh, I contend that the Prime Minister wasn't answering it. Now, it's not sufficient that he doesn't bother answering it at all. And that's what I'm asking you to, to rule. Order. But I have, if the member would only concentrate on what's going on, I have already... Order. Order. I have already ruled that the Prime Minister address the question that was asked. Further supplementaries? Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can the Prime Minister give New Zealanders a 100 per cent... Order. Order. If these interjections are going to continue, I will be asking the right honourable gentleman to leave the House. Now, I'm going to ask Andrew Little to restart his question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can the Prime Minister give New Zealanders a 100 per cent cast-iron guarantee that the Iraqi soldiers New Zealanders train won't use that training to help the Hezbollah terrorist group and the Assad dictatorship as they are currently doing? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I, I don't think realistically um, one can um, say that some person couldn't go off and do something else of their own thing. I mean, in, in reality, that is... Uh, that, well, that's an impossible thing for any, any person to do. But what I can do, Mr Speaker, is say that the Iraqi Foreign Minister made it clear in my meeting, I suspect he made it clear in the meeting that the member had as well, that security is their number one priority. They need help. And actually, we should provide them that help, as I pointed out yesterday, not just to help them stay stand up against the people of uh, uh, ISIL who would uh, attack Iraqi nationals and, and others, but actually because they're standing up to protect New Zealanders. And that member is better positioned than any other... That, that member is better positioned than any other New Zealander as leader of the opposition to understand the threats and the risks to New Zealanders. And that member knows, like I know, that the risk increases to New Zealanders, the stronger ISIL is. And I stand by my statement yesterday, he should back the right thing. Crisis supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Given that Australian special forces are already working with Iraqi units accused of war crimes, can he give New Zealanders a 100% cast iron guarantee that the Iraqi troops we train won't be using that training to commit war crimes? Right, Honourable Speaker, Prime Minister. He's asking me to give guarantees that, that no leader could. But, but, but Mr Speaker, but, Mr Speaker, what I can be sure of is that we are following something that will, um, in my view, in a small way, make a contribution to ensuring that ISIL is weaker and that protects New Zealanders more. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Does he seriously think that there is any chance that his objective of, quotes, Sunni, Shia and Kurds harmoniously sharing power and working together in Iraq, in quotes, will be achieved in two years? And if not, doesn't that mean a longer, larger commitment will be needed? Or is he just going to give up? Well, right, well, Honourable Prime well, Minister. Mr Speaker, I don't know whether it can be achieved in two years, but what I do know, and what I've been saying for a very long period of time, is in fact the strongest thing that can happen to stand up against ISIL is actually a government in Iraq which is inclusive. Secondly, as I've been saying, actually it is a long-run process, but that is why we are applying so many different parts to this, and that includes humanitarian support, includes diplomatic support, includes the work we're doing on the Security Council, and it includes some military capability. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Has he not seen the plaques around this chamber 
Malaya, where New Zealand's involvement began with cargo planes and ended 17 years later, and Vietnam, a national government, uh, which a national government said sending troops was the price of being in the club and the cost was eight years of a quagmire, hasn't he learned the lessons of history? Poor planning and lack of strategy and lack of judgment leads to mission creep and disaster. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, speaker, firstly, um, there won't be poor planning when it comes to uh, our, our troops going to Tajay Air Base. I'm quite confident if you look at the work that the CDF is doing uh, and the work that will go in there, um, I'm very confident it will be a well-planned mission. Secondly, I genuinely believe the member does a disservice to all of those that fought in these battles for the values and principles that underpin New Zealand. For a weak argument that I said yesterday and I stand by, the member is taking politics over people. Order. Question number four, Dr Shane Reetie. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister